welcome back to the Guzzy Sound Channel and part 8 in my series all about my Project 9 DIY modular analog synthesizer um, let me just turn this down a little bit stop the sequencer um, and in this video what we're going to be looking at is the last panel on the synthesizer um, which consists of there's there's four modules on the panel um, there's an envelope generator but the envelope generators were the subject of the last video so we're not going to do that one go check out the previous video um, but then that leaves us three other modules the first one is a passive high pass filter and then we have a passive low pass filter and then over here we have a passive low low pass filter so passive filters there's there's no amplification um very simple we'll we'll have a close up look at the panels um but you know these the whole idea of this was to keep it relatively cheap relatively simple and uh just just have something have a play around with with what I can do with with a passive filter you could argue that passive filters are really just like passive tone controls um, they just knock out certain frequencies but we'll have a look at the cir circuits we'll have a look at the panel in a bit more detail and then we'll have a listen to what effect they have on the signal and the audio signal passing through the synthesizer so let's go and take a closer look at the panel and how it's put together and then have a look at the circuits and see what they do. This is the panel a little closer up. Ignore the top right hand corner, that's, uh, that's the envelope generator. As I said earlier, we dealt with that last time round. So what we're looking at this time round are these other three modules on here which are all passive filters this top one is a high pass filter we've got a low pass filter and we've got a low low pass filter they all have an input and an output they all have a pot control which will alter the cutoff frequency this one in the bottom has a switch on there which allows me to switch between two low pass cutoff ranges and we'll have a look at the circuit behind that in a moment but again as I said at the, at the beginning these are passive modules um, so they, they're very simple we'll, we'll have a look at the actual circuits on the back of the panel and I'll show you what the circuit diagrams look like as I talk you through it so turning it over, that's the envelope. This one here is the high pass filter, which has a, a small capacitor there. If we look at the circuit diagram, we can see the arrangement. We can see that the capacitor is actually uh, in the input line. And then we have a fixed resistor and the potentiometer in between the input and ground. And this basically what this one does it will allow high frequencies to pass through um, but will block out the lower frequencies which will um, give you a, a kind of a, a more of a, a top end sound um, it's, it's it's passive so basically it's just taking out part of the signal there's there's going to be no amplification or anything this one is the low pass filter. You can see physically it's a much bigger capacitor and what this one is designed to do, if you look at the circuit on this, we can see the capacitor is now between the input and ground and the potentiometer control is on the uh, input line. Um, and this circuit is designed to knock out the high frequencies and allow the low frequencies to pass through. Now the thing is that the larger the capacitor, the lower the cutoff frequency. So 
this one we have a circuit board here and we've got the potentiometer and we've got a switch and we've got the in and out sockets I'll just unscrew this briefly and flip it over you should see that on the back we now have two capacitors and all the switch does is allow me to switch between one capacitor or the other and one capacitor is larger than the other so the cutoff frequency of one of them will be lower than the cutoff frequency of the other. Now the passive circuits and there's no CV input on them so basically all you're doing is turning the potentiometer by hand to actually alter the cutoff frequency and therefore the frequency range of the sounds that come through. So from the high pass you will alter how much of the high frequencies go through and on the low pass you will no, uh, alter how much of the low frequencies go through and how much of the high frequencies you, you knock out. Um, like I say there's, there's, there's no, no other control other than manual. In effect these circuits, particularly this, this low pass style circuit, is pretty much the same as you would find on a tone control on a passive guitar. Um, very, very simple, very, very cheap to build. But what does it sound like when we actually put signals through it and start twiddling with the potentiometers? Well, let's put it back into the Project 9 modular and We'll have a listen. Okay, so that that's kind of what the circuits uh, do, but what does it sound like in action? Well, we'll go back to when I started the video with, with that uh, sequence. I'll talk you through the patch first. So, come over here. What, what we're doing, we're taking the output from my 555 VCO that's going through a Vactral, which is being triggered by the first envelope. And then the output from the Vactral is going into the in on the low pass filter. And the output is simply going into the mixer and out to the audio that you can hear on the video. Um, so if I start the uh, sequence running, Cutoff frequency control is on maximum. As I start to turn it down, two things happen really. Um, you should notice that some of the top end has actually disappeared, but you probably also notice that um, the volume level has gone down. Well, as I was saying when we're looking at the circuits, the, these are passive circuits. What they're actually doing is subtracting part of the signal from what you're putting in. So what you're getting out is less than what you, you put in. So this is one of the downsides on, of having a passive system is that basically it's all about knocking stuff out of what you start with so that you end up with, with less but hopefully you can hear it does have a noticeable effect particularly with a nice kind of raunchy square wave that you'll get from a 555 VCO what happens if we put the output through my low low circuit okay so output from the Vactrol going to the input on the low low filter output from the low low filter back into the mixer and I've got the switch set to low so let's start it up again and that's it with it on max Turn the cut off down. So if I now 
switch it to low low so I'm basically switching in a bigger capacitance value you can hear straight away that the, the bass is kind of coming through more than the, some of the top has already disappeared even though the cutoff control is now set at max so if I turn it down from there Really, you're just getting some really subdued low bass tones coming through. That's, that's kind of a nice point in the setting there. That's, that's got a little, kind of a real good bass line going on there. And if you bring it up, you can bring some of the grittiness of that square wave oscillator back into the mix. You kind of you can fool yourself into thinking that you've got a bit of resonance there. You, you haven't. It's <laughs> It's the characteristic of the waveform that's going through the filter. Now the thing is, if I put that through the high pass filter, what's going to happen is you're just basically going to lose most of the signal. So, let's just try it anyway. There we go. Because it's a bass signal that's going in, Even if I turn some of it back in, I hardly hear it in the background at all. So what we actually need to do, I don't know whether I can get the 555 oscillator to run high enough. Probably not. Right, let's try something else. So I'm altering the patch now, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to pass the um, Avalanche VCO on, on the Project 9 back through the envelope again um, I've got it switched to the high frequency range um, and we're going to pass it from so we've got a high frequency output from the Avalanche VCO going th through the Vactrol which is triggered by the envelope I'm going to run pretty much the same kind of sequence on it. I don't know what's going to happen here because I've not tried this yet. And then stick it through the high pass filter. You can hear it's having some sort of effect. If I'm going to be honest about this, the high pass filter, the idea of putting that in there was to help me shape the output from the noise generator when I was going to kind of try and produce some, some percussive noise sounds. Um, the reality is that in, in this particular design, the noise module didn't work. You can, you can see how that failed um, if you want to look at the previous videos in this series um, and given the other oscillators in in this uh, setup and the way that they work and the output to be honest with you very little if any use at all to have this high pass filter in there I could mess around with some of the capacitor values and try and bring its range down into something that's kind of more of a mid-range filter so not, not a low pass not so much a high pass but kind of a, um, a mid-range kind of filtering um, which might be more useful um, I just haven't bothered to play around with the capacitor values maybe if I get a spare moment and feel a bit bored I'm get intrigued I'll go and have a play and just see what I can do but for now I think realistically Okay. 
skipped over the Vox War panel and that wasn't in the original um, Project 9 uh, concept. If you want to know how that got in there and, and how it all works then you know there is a, a whole playlist on, on the Vox War. Um, but yeah, so we've we've gone through oscillators, low frequency oscillators, um, failed noise unit, Vactral VCA, envelopes, patch bays, and finally into um, passive filters. And that pretty much, with the power supply in the case, is the original concept for my Project 9 DIY modular analog synth. Throughout this series, I've given you all the links and diagrams you need to, well, basically, come on, have a go, build your own.